Baer. I'm with Paul Seftel. This is Conversations and Collaborations. We're in Paul Seftel's studio. Uh, it's been very interesting this morning because I've, I've been in here when it's been very cleaned up and for a show and, uh, you know, everything very orderly and... Uh, but now I'm in here what? more... What? This isn't orderly? It's orderly. <laughs> no, it's more real as the day-to-day -day working artists where I'm, I'm seeing some pieces taken out and, uh, you know, in other words, I'm not seeing just new work that's, that's current. I'm seeing the older work. I'm seeing the, the uh, things in various stages of development. I'm, so I'm in a room where I'm actually feeling the conversation of the pieces. Mm. And mm. what you and I have discussed is that Certain artists, you know, in terms of, I think both of us, think of our our work as a almost a single unit, or or, mm. an, or an organet, an organism. I don't mm. I don't think we think in terms of that we're doing one-offs mm. as much as we're in process, and mm. one leads to another, and there's a conversation going on. You're in the room, and you see how one piece talks to another, how one thing leads to another, how things make their um, make the, the the evolutions that make sense you know mm. I, I mean I think that's mm. kind of I always think of the sacred spiral where things go to their nice their their, uh, their truest form mm. or their you know they things flow to where they're, they're, they're going where you can't you know long down the road you can't anticipate where it's going right but 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 i have enough work in the room that i'm seeing oh this led to here this led to here this led to here so, which changes the conversation to your collector because they may have a piece but they're getting a frozen right. moment of time right that you know in other words they're what they're owning is a piece of a bigger conversation Right, it's not just the material you know, object. You didn't give them the a end, decoration yeah. for their, their wall. You gave them that wasn't the intention a, a necessarily. A bit of your yeah. practice that is part of a bigger conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, you made me think of, of driving at night. Yeah, when you're driving at night, you really only have, as far as your headlights are, are blaring, that's as far as you can see. It's not very far. I mean, that's been kind of my journey in art in general, is you can't see very far ahead. Um, and you work with, you can go as fast as you can go within the speed of what you can see. Um, and it keeps changing. The road keeps changing as you keep moving along. For me, I think the best way I can describe what you're talking about there is a journey of color. Um, and that has been my path for a long time. I've used it as a teaching tool because if you go deeply into any, any form of practice, the more deeply you go, the more you're gonna learn. I mean, if you're into numbers and studying numbers, the more you study numbers, the more that they will reveal their secrets. And the same is with color because the, the difference between red and blue, you know, is a whole spectrum, but they're not separate. Everything is connected. One, you know, the spectrum is, is a part of one another and it all makes white, right? You know, the seven colors lead to light. Um, and on the other side of the spectrum, you know, of light, you have darkness. And what colors are, are visible within the darkness? Are they invisible colors? And, and what makes black? And, I've never used any black pigment. It's just darkness within darkness. And within that you see light. So the deepest reds and the deepest blues and the deepest greens can make this deep dark planes. And still exploring what the eyes can see and what they can't see. So you're yeah. in a very um, enchanted place, you're in a very um, sacred space, you're in a very um, switched on space when you're working. You're in, you're, you're in a very heightened sensibility. And you're well, in we, your, we mustn't your forget that that can be chaos and, yes. and abandonment as well. Yes. Because I think, uh, you know, there's this 
it's often a misunderstanding that you know that higher sacred state is you know and switched onness is something we have any control over or is it or is it, or it's a found space yeah it could be a very it may even it just be, be a the very end. lost space too. yeah you yes. know maybe that freedom within the sense of abandonment and chaos yeah which is constant yes yeah that sense of finding order or something from that is the search um, to not create something as a formula and to constantly be seeking in the dark it, for something new to reveal itself. It, it's, it, it's, 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 a, it's a bit of a Zen mastery because, again, being... It's a drunken master, yeah, you know? Drunken the drunken master, master yeah. who's learned the ways and then has to lose their senses in order to perform seemingly so gracefully, right? <laughs> um, I think that, you know, even in my own movement and stuff, I haven't been very disciplined to take on a form of, you know, Qigong or Tai Chi or, or yoga in any you, constant way. I mix them, I find my own dance. But you've got your dance. Yeah, well, <laughs> through finding it, through yes. constantly practicing yes. and not being afraid to be the fool on the hill who's standing there on one leg, you know, dancing beneath the tree. Because that's, you know, you're not, I'm not trying to go with, along with anything. I don't feel like I'm inspired, per se, by a specific movement or, or artist, but just by nature and something about what we're going through now, collectively. Well, um, let's, let's talk about the, the opposite of that, too. Because, mm. uh, again, both of us very have a sense of art history, mm. have a sense of mm. develop you know, the, the development have a, certainly uh, since the beginning of modernism, we, we, right. we kind of understand the trajectory. Right. Uh, we understand the different pathways that have come out through mount, after modernism. Uh, we have a sense of the, of the now in the greater world. God bless Instagram is, allows us to really be seeing you know, what the, other people are creating, yeah. yeah, what, what, yeah. You know, be in a sense of the where one stands in, the, in that bigger conversation, in a certain mm. in, in a certain sense, which is maybe that's for other people to see in that way from these other mediums, as yeah. people you know can start to see who's doing what. And I mean, I I had somebody say to me just very recently, you know, I walked into this person's place and they were an abstract artist and. I like their work, but then when I came into your place, it's like they said, if this person was an abstract artist, what are you, right? <laughs> and so, you know, for me, in terms of history, I think as far as the abstract expressionists, if they only had the materials that I have available to me now, they wished that they did, right? But still, that sense of abandon and the action painting, the physicality of that, um, inspires me, but and, nature and, inspires and, and me more. And frees you, and now you right. know where it's... In other words, right. every, everything that happened before is a... Is a we, we live in a time where it's all available. Right. And, and but it, I like this phrase, you know, standing on the shoulders of giants. Yes. Right, so the, there was an artist in the 1800s too, Caspar David Friedrich, had a German romanticist, right. and he said, in order to be fully yourself, you have to be everything that's come before and one step more. One step more. You know, so, and he painted these figures standing on the edge of the cliff looking off into the void, right? And so, I was always really inspired by his work, by his thinking, by that romantic thinking. And then it was a state of, well, let's not just depict what being there. Let's be there. Let's deliver the viewer to the edge of that abyss, so that they are that figure looking into that void, and that there is something perpetually fascinating about this void, to fill the void, yeah. even. Because yeah. I, I think that's where art comes from, too. It's, it's not just inspiration, it's emptiness, right? I mean, for me, a lot of it comes from almost a sense of boredom with the world and the thinking nature of, of our so-called society. And, Going back to the cave, to Plato's clay cave, or to prehistoric art, you know, and just the handprints on the walls, and using the shape of the walls to 
create the undulations of, of bison and deer and, and the hunt um, and the shadow from the candles on the wall to fully create that illusion. And we don't forget that we're part of an illusion and that's this manifestation process. Maybe, you know, these stories which were created weren't just about a memory, a story of the hunt. Maybe they were an invocation too of what was to come. And for me, that is what art is as well, is this place you can climb into to swim into this, the invocation of what we want the world to be. Well, I, there, I think also, as you're expressing this, there's always the, um, you know, as I say, things are, are part of an organism here. Mm. And there's always the thrill of the what nextness. In other words, if you don't do this, you can't get to that. Right. And and the what nextness, the surprise. In other words, if you're not having a big surprise when you're working, if I'm not having a big surprise, then this is absolutely a pointless exercise. Right. Or it's 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 a different conversation than we're having. Right. You know, I, I can't you know I I can't yeah. judge that. But the conversation we're having is about the what nextness of somehow things. about revelation. That you know revelation about what you're revealing. And the, yeah. And the having faith in a you know, if, if it's the God of art, have, having faith in a God that's going to not let you down. And that revelation is that thing that doesn't let you down. There's always that nextness and that surprise if it's going. Right. You know, and, and, and sometimes then it, it, that disappears and then there's that other, the opposite of that. And that's, oh, yeah. that's, that's psychologically very, very difficult to deal with. And, and again, we're having a conversation that can be happening which would be a very big drama in your life, would be a very big drama in anybody else's life, there's no one you could tell about it. Right. It, it's like, you know, who would you, you know, your, 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 your wife couldn't, would, would, would be empathetic, but wouldn't understand. Or who would? Hmm. And why would they? And it's so, again, having the... the the importance of having the art conversation is so that we're articulating what, again, is often invisible. Right, right, because you can't expect, you know, I, I had this realization recently, I've been sp spent so much of my life thinking about the philosophy of art, like even before I really came to deciding to be a professional artist as opposed to doing other things, um, going into business. I mean, certainly when I was a, a kid and a teenager, it drew me in from my heart making art. But then as I turned into my early 20s, I thought a lot about, well, what is the point of making pictures? Yeah, of making a painting. Um, what are we expressing here? Yes, there's a therapy aspect, but are we getting into something else? Are we talking, am I talking just about me? Or am I looking at a larger picture? What am I trying to communicate here? Now, like this sense of hope in direction, in, in following, you know, the, what you're finding. You're being given a lead through the work and you keep traveling down that road, only as far as you can see, right? Now, then I often question to myself over the last couple of decades, well, is hope much of a business plan? Because in our 21st century, we're all like, well, they have to do this and that and the other in well, order let's, to let's, succeed. Let's, let's get into that in the next segment. Mm. This is Mark Baer. I'm with Paul Septel. You're watching Conversations and Collaborations, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 